ಸಹನಾಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೇತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವೇಷಾವಹೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 Um, we have looked at a few sutras. We have looked at about 12 sutras so far, which uh, of the Narada Bhakti sutras. Um, Lord Narada has been telling us about the type of Bhakti. bhakti which is ananya so you know which does not rely on anyone else anything else and so on so now we will today we will look at the 13th uh, sutra sutras ಅನ್ಯಥಾ ಪಾತಿತ್ಯ ಶಂಕಯ ಅನ್ಯಥಾ ಪಾತಿತ್ಯ ಶಂಕಯ ಅನ್ಯಥಾ ಪಾತಿತ್ಯ ಶಂಕಯ um in terms of pronunciation the last letter tha in the first word is has to be aspirated anyatha okay anyatha the rest of the letters are not aspirated it should be easy now this one is unka unka okay shankaya um there are there no other respiratory consonants so it should be rather simple anyatha patitya shankaya let's uh, look at the split there's no changes due to sandhi in this uh, sutra but any anyway, i've separated the patitya and shankaya for the sake of uh, studying the meaning of each of the words uh, we will look at the meaning anyatha so anyatha means otherwise in okay any other state in any other uh, state of mind that we may have any other approach we may have this is chance of falling atithya um, and uh, atitha means patana means to fall patana is fall dropping down from some other higher state so patita i think many of you would have come across what patita one who has fallen down down prodden so patitya means it will cause us to fall any other approach will make us fall uh, because anyata you know you should not rely on anyone else for anything a devotee will not uh but they will follow the shastras <coughs> they protect the shastras and all that is good and which is conducive for their devotion they will take 
others they may ignore and those are things which we have already looked at so if those approaches are not used one is bound to fall why shankaya shankaya is the third vibhakti or the third noun form of the word shanka shanka means doubt uncertainty and so on or fear also cause out of doubt i would say so if the devotee does not do this there's a potential for fall uh, for a fall due to doubts see most of the time uh, in any spiritual uh, topic when you uh, when we have not studied it properly when we have not analyzed it and understood and internalized properly even someone asks a question or someone makes an opposite statement our faith itself can be shaken so that is because lack of devotion is what narada is saying people will question where does god exist who is god who is an avatar how do you know that you know these questions come up and because of our lack of knowledge or our the lack of rigor in our study doubts crop up and doubts crop up and then one way fall down for a devotee it will not happen this is what uh, narada is telling for an hour so let's look at uh, discourse except of swami it's uh, almost half the discourse i've excerpted let's uh, read it at a recent meeting in bangalore a devotee said i am constantly bathing in the river of life flowing in bangalore but where is this river of life to be found in bangalore he indicated he indicated that he considered the drainage water in the city as life giving water life giving a river it flows on forever and is never dry it is no wonder that people bathing in such life giving rivers are full of diseases what are the causes of the maladies afflicting people today impure air polluted water adulterated foodstuffs etc no risk at all even the minds are polluted these mental ailments are the cause of man's degradation most of the diseases are caused by aberrations of the mind 90% of the diseases are psychological constant thinking about one's health is also the cause of many diseases a heart specialist who was constantly examining heart patients was worried about his i think sorry his own heart ultimately he died of heart attack another doctor who specialized in treating digestion disorders ultimately died of gastric troubles by worrying about his own digestion the mind has thus a vital role in one's health or illness that was why the sages declared the mind is the cause of men's bondage or liberation when the mind is directed toward sacred things everything in one's life becomes sacred in one's life becomes sacred in such a state all that you think see or hear becomes pure and sacred the heart is like a lock with the mind as the key turn the key toward god you develop detachment then the mind towards the world you get attachment our minds should 
not be immersed in mundane concerns. Deem everything in the world as divine. Once Vivekananda went to Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and asked him, Have you seen God? Yes, said Ramakrishna. In what form? asked Vivekananda. <coughs> Ramakrishna replied, I am seeing him just as I am seeing you. Why then am I unable to see him? That's Vivekananda asking. Ramakrishna explained that if he yearned for God with the same intensity with which he was yearning for many other things, he would be able to experience God. Ramakrishna said that people shed tears for relations, wealth and many other things. But how many shed tears for God? Ramakrishna advised Vivekananda to yearn for God with all his heart and soul. God is then bound to manifest himself to him. If we are keen to experience the divine, we must devote ourselves to the divine. People go through various troubles for the sake of wealth, relations, position and power. If they were to devote a small fraction of that time to thoughts of God, they would experience freedom from the fear of death. If you think only of world, how can you get peace and bliss? Concentrate on the love of God. Although one's mother, father and preceptor are to be adored as divine beings, they are not God. God should be worshipped as mother, father, preceptor, kinsman and friend. Father, mother and preceptor dwell in their respective abodes. But God dwells in your heart. Love the Lord who resides in your heart. All other objects of love are impermanent. What is the use of education if you have not learnt to worship God? What does the worship of God mean? Practices like meditation, japa and penance are all tainted by selfishness. True worship of God consists in seeking union with God by realizing one's own divinity. With every breath, man proclaims that he and the divine are one in the mantra Soham, expressed through inhalation and exhalation. Men must recognize that the body becomes a sacred shrine, Kshetra, because the indweller is God, Kshetra To know that God is the indweller will free a person from all bad qualities. Egoism is the worst enemy of man. Possessiveness, mamakara, is another evil trait. Both these should be banished since they are at the root of all vices. When the two evil traits go, man becomes divinized. By developing love, one sees the divine in all beings. It is like wearing colored glasses. If you see the world through the glasses of love, you will see love everywhere. The glasses and the vision must be in harmony. Only with the eye of love can you use the glasses of love to see the loveliness of the world. There is no greater spiritual path than the path of love. It is true love that such noble qualities of kindness, compassion and sympathy are fostered. Embodiments of love. You are carrying on a variety of spiritual exercises, sadhanas. God does not seek your sadhanas. Nor does he seek your devotion. He seeks only your love. A short while ago, K.R. Prasad, a member of the Satisai Central Trust, came to me. In the course of our talk, he asked me, what is the difference between a bhakti? A devotee and a dasa, servant of the Lord. I told him, Dasa is one who seeks to serve the Lord using his body for the purpose. 
Bhakta is one who is always thinking about God wherever he may be. The devotee is one who always and at all times contemplates on God. Sarvada, Sarvakaleshu, Sarvatra, Harichintanam. Dasa is always thinking of service to God. Shankaracharya had five disciples. One of them was pure-hearted. The other disciples were keenly studying the Shastras, the Upanishads and other texts. They were also learning logic and grammar. One day, Shankaracharya was teaching these disciplines, these disciples, the principles of logic. One of them was primarily concerned with the service to the Guru. He regarded himself as a dasa of the Guru. He was engaged in gathering clothes for the, of the Guru after morning ablutions, taking them to the Ganga, washing them, drying them and bringing them back to the ashram. <coughs> Thus, he was totally involved in attending to the personal needs of the Guru. He kept the Guru's clothes clean, chanting all the while the name of the Guru. Once on his way back from the other bank of the river, he did not realize that the Ganga was in spate. As he was crossing the river, it rose up to the level of his neck. He looked around but had no fear whether he would be washed away by the swelling waters. His only worry was how to take the clothes to the Guru even at the cost of his life. Placing the clothes on his head and chanting the word Guruji, Guruji, he continued wading through the forest river. Because of his intense devotion to his Guru, at every step he took the, it, he took there, sorry, at every step he took, come out here, there was a lotus shaped stone on which he could place his foot. He thereby earned the appellation Padma Pada. Shankaracharya called him and imparted his teachings to him. He told Padmapada, service to the Guru is, of, is a great virtue. You have adored the Guru as God. Guru represents the Trinity and is the Supreme Self. God alone is the real Guru. Today, the scriptural saying that Guru is Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara should be understood not in the literal sense, but in the sense that God alone is the real Guru. Shankara taught Padmapada that individual preceptors should not be worshipped as gods. Then he imparted to Padmapada the sacred truth. The other four disciples used to treat Padmapada previously as an ignoramus. After receiving the teachings from Shankaracharya, Padmapada could repeat the entire Vedic text at one stroke. He became a good exponent of Vedanta better than many scholars. One day, Shankaracharya summoned Padmapada and asked him to whom he was preaching and what message he was giving to them. Padmapada burst into him in praise of Shiva and said that Shankara was the inspiration for all his teachings and all his discourses were an offering to Shankara. Who is Shankara? Shankara is one who is free from Shanka doubts. One, no one should have any doubts about God. The doubting man can achieve nothing. With total faith and total love, you can accomplish anything. It should be realized that proficiency in fields like music, literature and the arts is secured by the grace of the divine. All fine arts are gifts from God. Nothing can be claimed as one's own achievement. The recipient of God's grace will lack nothing. He will have no troubles and he will commit no wrongs because he has surrendered to God. The person who considers God as his all becomes one with God himself. Hence, direct your minds towards God. So Swami has... Uh, talked about love, you know, which is what we have sta we started the 
Narada Bhakti Sutra with this one, Parama Prema Swarupa. You know, the love is nothing but supreme love. Devotion itself is supreme love. So as we can see, Swami is giving so much important love. And a devotee who has love will get everything. There's absolutely no doubt, no fear. And Swami has given the example of Sri Padmapada, one of uh, the disciples of Shankaracharya. Um, we will uh, go on to the next sutra. Lokopi Tavadeva Bhojanadi Vyaparastva Sharira Dharanavadi Lokopi Tavadeva Bhojanadi Vyaparastva Sharira Dharanavadi Lokopi Tavadeva Bhojanadi Vyaparastva Sharira Dharanavadi uh, we will look at it's a very long one and uh, very long compound word also. We we'll look at the pronunciation aspects. Low copy, uh, no aspirated consonants. Um, this this S type of thing is silent A. Okay, silent A. So it's low copy. Okay, the co becomes a little longer, and the A is silent. Low copy, tavadeva. So the bho in the third word is uh, using the consonant ba, which is the fourth letter in the per vargo per class of consonants. It has to be aspirated. So bho janadi. Okay. Vyaparas twa sharira. No uh, aspirated consonants. Dha here is the fourth letter in the Ta, Virgo, ta, class of consonants, so it has to be aspirated. Dha. Okay, dha. Dharana va dhi. The last letter is also the same dha, but it is dhi. It's also aspirated because it's the fourth letter. It comes from the fourth consonant of the ta class of consonants. Um, those are the pronunciation aspects of certain consonants which you have to pay attention to. Let's look at the Sandhi split and individual words of the sutra. <clears throat> Lokopi is comprised of two words, Lokaha and Api. The uh, Visarga at the end of the word Lokaha turns into U and so Ka plus U becomes Ko, Loko and the A becomes silent. Okay. So lokaha api becomes loko api. The next word is tavadeva. It's comprised of two words, tavat and eva. The it in the first word becomes id because of sandhi or join. So id and a becomes de. Okay, that's how you get tavat eva becomes tavadeva. Okay, tavadeva. Next word is, actually I could have split that also. It's bhojana, bhojanadi. It's bhojana and adi. Okay, bhojana and adi. Um, they look at the meaning. But I have just kept it together because it's a very common use uh, to link adi with many words. Adi is nothing but etc beginning from and so on. We'll look at the meaning. So it's Bhojanadi. The next word is a very long compound consonant. Vyaparaha and Tu. Asharira Dharanavadhi. It's a compound word called Samasa. Three words put together, strung together as a compound word. Um, so I've kept them, but the, the individual three words, okay. But because uh, they have internal sandhi only, so I have just put the dash just to uh, explain the individual words. So vyaparaha and tu becomes vyaparastu. The visarga becomes is and 
दोस टू वर्ड्स बिकम व्यापारस्तु व्यापार तू बिकम्स व्यापारस्तु दू एंड आ शरीर तू एंड आ बिकम्स त्वा तू एंड आ बिकम्स त्वा सो दट वर्ड यू गेट व्यापार स्वा शरीर व्यापार स्वा शरीर सो आ शरीर धारणा अवधि इज दट कंपाउंड कंपाउंड वर्ड आ शरीर धारणा अवधि सो बिटवीन आ शरीर एंड धारणा देर नो संधि रिलेटेड चेंजेस धारणा एंड अवधि ना प्लस अ बिकम्स ना ओके धारणा अवधि सो दिस इज द स्प्लिट्स वर्ड स्प्लिट्स वी लुक एट द मीनिंग ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल वर्ड्स लोकह लोकह मींस दिस वर्ल्ड लोकह इज दिस वर्ल्ड api api has many meanings but i have used the word also you can even say even even is also another uh, uh, like i put that also so loka api even the world okay that's what it means world also which way you want to make it thavat means until a point you know something something happens thavat eva only so this world is also only until then okay this world is only until then until a particular point in time so let's look at further then the next word is bhojanaadi bhojana means food eating aadi means etc all this eating and you know there are basic things which a human being has to do a devotee will also do okay only bhojanaadi vyapara vyapara means any transaction worldly transactions you can say so what is this loka it's being explained as bhojanaadi and vyapara okay this eating etc all these transaction business transactions and vyapara all the uh, vyapara is all this worldly transactions and bhojana the eating sleeping drinking water and things like that bhojana the vyapara to indeed this some people attribute other meanings also to it because it can change meaning depending on the context But I have used the word indeed here. Ashreera dharana abadhi. So that's the last word. It's compound word, comprising of three different words. Ashreera. So, shreera is a body. Okay, ashreera means to keep it. In the, as long as we take an a means. till then till the sharira that we also it means a means till a particular point in time till a particular place in time you know that we also it comes so a sharira means to the extent of the body okay to the extent of the body dharana dharana means to hold uh, to support okay till the body is supported you can say avadhi avadhi means a limit a ceiling you can say you know <clears throat> so all these worldly transactions and eating etc should be for the sake of keeping the body alive just holding on to the body that's all the devotee does any worldly activities they will do only and they will be done only for the sake of retaining the body 
and only the body lasts. So more importance will not be given for any worldly activities by the devotee. The devotee also may take, partake some food, you know, he may take some water, but all for the sake of holding the body together. There's a very famous Sanskrit word, Swami often repeats, Bhikshanam Deha Rakshartham. Deha Rakshartham means to protect the body only you should eat. Not for any enjoyment. So that's generally, so a devotee will do all worldly things such as eating and any small transaction just to keep the body intact. So we will uh, read a discourse except of Swami. Thus, the Ishavasi Upanishad elaborates beautifully on the unity of pleasure and sacrifice. We must not be inactive. Action sanctifies the body and time. The goal of human life is to harmonize time, action, cause and duty. Repeat the sentence. The goal of human life is to harmonize time, action, cause and duty. The words Swami has used are Kala, Karma, Karana and Kartavya. Kala, Karma, Karana, Kartavya. How do we use our time? We increase our selfishness, selfishness, selfishness. How then can we expect the union of pleasure and sacrifice, bhoga and tyaga? Instead of merging tyaga into bhoga, we attain roga, disease through bhoga. Aspire to be a yogi, not a seeker of pleasure, bhogi. What is bhoga? Eating, sleeping and living life forgetful of time. Bhikshanam deha rakshartam. Vastram shita nivaranam. Food is necessary for the upkeep of the body. Food protects the body. Clothes. Shield against adverse weather. The body is home of mucus, phlegm, urine and disease. The body is a mound of waste matter. Hardly the boat to ferry one across this ocean of birth and death. <clears throat> o mind, do not trust this body. Instead, seek refuge at the lotus feet of Hari. The body is bound to rot like waste, collapse like a broken chariot. To prevent disease, we must take medicine. What is disease and what is good health? Everything is a disease. Hunger is an affliction, food is its medicine. Thirst is a disease, water is the cure. For every disease, there is a prescribed remedy. Similarly, the craving for pleasure is a disease. Action is the medicine. We may desire bliss, but how can we secure it without action? You can place potato and chapati in a plate and repeat their names as long as you wish. Your hunger is not satisfied. To fill your stomach, put your hand and mouth to work meaning hands busy in work and mouth busy in repetition of the divine name. With such dual effort, you will definitely attain bliss. Everything in this world is a disease, roga. With the right outlook, we can convert every situation into yoga. Our scriptures say that a person who eats one meal per day is a yogi. Two meals a day makes one a bhogi, pleasure seeker. And three meals make one a rogi, disease. One who eats four times a day is as good as dead. These days, we struggle to fill our stomachs, but not to get established in an idealistic, 
moral life and realize the goal of human birth. Students, everything perishes with time. When the time, when time, deed, circumstances, and duty, kala karma karana kattavya, so decree, the body itself will collapse. The body may die, but ideals remain immortal. Be idealistic and live in the heart, live in hearts forever. Yes, some desires are necessary, but they must be within limits. Keep limits. Focus on the welfare of all and perform actions with a sense of duty. This is the union of renunciation and pleasure, tyaga and bhoga. Truly, the joy we derive from selfless actions cannot be measured. Through the sacrifice of service to society, we are able to experience the pleasure of bliss. When we act with the fruits in mind, joy eludes us. In this world, if we forget two issues, we succeed in bringing renunciation, tyaga, and pleasure, bhoga, together. First, the good we have done to others. If we recollect favors done by us, we begin expecting something in return and open ourselves to disappointment. This also paves the way to jealousy and hatred. Forget the help you give immediately. Second, forget the harm others have done to you. With the recollecting of suffering, you develop vengeance and related defects. Before such harmful feelings sprout, forget the harm caused by others. When we are able to set aside these two thoughts, we merge renunciation and pleasure, tyaga and bhoga. If we unearth these issues in our memory all the time, we, sorry, if we unearth these issues in our memory all the time, we become a heap of foul smelling vices. Our thoughts create reactions. In ancient Indian tradition, Reactions of actions are held paramount. Indian culture stands on certain strong convictions. Results of action, karma, are inescapable. God incarnates in human form as an avatar. Everything in the world is a form of God and is naturally sacred. With purity, patience and perseverance, we can realize the truth of these ancient beliefs. Students, inquire into these matters from a tender age. Desire, renunciation, tyaga, with pleasure, bhoga, not disease, roga, with bhoga. Renunciation, renunciation, renunciation. Renunciation is our true pleasure. I often quote, not by actions, wealth or children, by sacrifice alone is immortality attained. Na karmana, na prajaya, dhane na, dhane na tyage ne ki amritatva manashu. If we do not release the air we inhale, do we help or hurt ourselves? Our lungs will perish. If the remnants of digested food are not excreted, is it sacrifice or pleasure, tyago or bhoga? It is neither. It becomes disease, roga, and the stomach suffers. Just as we release air and food, we must sacrifice the money we earn. In the above quotation, what is wealth? Dhana. Wealth refers to education, youth, wisdom, joy, and so on. For instance, having earned the wealth of education, you must apply it to serve others, disseminate its gist to others. Then your knowledge will grow. If you do not propagate and apply your skills, you lose them. 
the more you sacrifice the more you receive and progress never feel that you help someone else you help only yourself students in our worldly physical view of life we pay attention only to growth but not to the decay that accompanies it our body grows but our life span decays correspondingly we rejoice upon sunrise and sunset at sunrise we feel go good now i can do my tasks at sunset we feel equally happy finally i can take some rest this is nothing but ignorance every sunrise and sunset consume a day of our life span which we treat carelessly therefore engage in your duty by understanding the significance of dawn and dusk shri ramakrishna used to pan for the lord's vision from dawn to dusk at the end of the day just before sleeping he used to look around dispiritedly and cry oh no yet another day has gone by without the lord's vision treating every moment as a day you, we, he used to ache for the lord without interruption our ancient rishis also turned their yearning into penance and experienced divinity what is meant by penance tapas standing on your head and squinting your eyes is not penance unity and purity in thought word and deed trikarana shuddhi is penance a great soul has unity in thought word and deed manasyekam vachasyekam karmanyekam mahatmana a sinful soul is characterized characterized by disagreement in thought word and deed manasanyat vachasanyat karmanyanyat duratmana when thought word and deed are not one only darkness tamas will result instead of penance tapas A human birth is rare in living beings. Jantu naam narjan madur labham. We should aspire for divinity beyond us, not for worldly pleasures beneath us. Therefore, it is no mistake to pursue secular education, but keep the permanent goal of life in view. We are truly yogis, not bhogis, pleasure seekers, or rogis, sick people. Yogis are known by sacrifice or renunciation. Tiyaga. so this is an excerpt i think which swami touches all the topics how much the world has to be till what to what takes and what should be the limit of eating and all other transactions swami has nicely explained so i thought it's a very good summary or explanation of this sutra thank you we'll go to the next uh, sutra talakshanani ವಾಚ್ಯಂತೆ ನಾನಾಮತ ಭೇದಾತ್ ತಲ್ಲಕ್ಷಣಾನಿ ವಾಚ್ಯಂತೆ ನಾನಾಮತ ಭೇದಾತ್ ತಲ್ಲಕ್ಷಣಾನಿ ವಾಚ್ಯಂತೆ ನಾನಾಮತ ಭೇದಾತ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೆಟರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪೇ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ವೈಲ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಪ್ರನೌನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ತಲ್ಲಕ್ಷ this ksha is uk and sha the sha is cerebral sha tip of the tongue should point towards the roof of the mouth talakshanani vachyante nanamata bhe uh, this bhe is the fourth letter in the pa class of consonants so it has to be aspirated nanamata bhe dat bhe dat Uh, we will look at the sandhi split split of the words the first word is talakshanani it's a samasa so that's why i've kept them together even though i've split the words samasa is a compound word it has to be together for because uh, by each if you split the words and individual look at it they may not give good meaning um, so that's why i've kept it together talakshanani is made of two words tat and lakshanani lakshanani the it becomes il because it's followed by la it becomes il because it is followed by la so that's how you get talakshanani instead of tat lakshanani you say talakshanani 
Next word is vachante, no change. It's just a verb. The third word is also a samasa, made of three distinct words. So I have separated them. But there are no changes due to sandhi. Nana, mata, bhedad. It will just help you read also when you read the word. Nana, mata, bhedad. We look at the word to word meaning. Okay, tat stands for that. Tat stands for that. Lakshana. Lakshanani is a plural word. The singular is lakshanam. Lakshanam is singular, one characteristic. Lakshanani means characteristics, plural. Okay. So the characteristics of that, of this bhakti, tal lakshanani, the characteristics of bhakti or devotion. Vachyante, Vachyante is also plural uh, verb, plural verb, means they are described, okay, it's a passive usage, Vachyante are spoken, are described, okay, they, the characteristics of Bhakti are described in many ways, okay, are spoken of in many ways, Nana Mata Bhedat, Okay. Um, there are three words, nana, mata, and bheda. Okay, bheda is a fifth noun form, okay, of the word bheda, okay, um, which gives a meaning from, due to, you know, arising from something and so on. Nana means various, okay. Variety, okay, diverse, you can many, nana means many kinds. Nana, many kinds. Mata, mata means th thought. Comes from the word mati, you know, a mind is called mati because it's mata, it's thinking, thoughts. So various thoughts, beliefs, that's why in all religions are also called mata. Vaishnava mata, Shaiva mata. Of course, in Tamil, people say madam, but mother has a completely different meaning. Mata. Okay. Uh, Swami has used the word mata uh, many places. Mata uh, Mulaniyu. You know, Swami, that's, uh, I think the next uh, except Swami would have recited that. That means all religions. Sometimes in the tra translations uh, by Kasturi, sir, uh, he has used the word cult. But uh, that word cult, the way usage, his usage is religion, a belief system. But sometimes it has, that word has taken on negative connotations in modern day usage. But it can be cult also, uh, that set of beliefs. But of course, if they become dogmatic, then they become a kind of problem. But Mata is religion, thought, belief, whatever you want to say. So various kinds of beliefs. Bheda, Bheda is difference. Bheda is difference. So due to the differences in the thought process of various kinds, the characteristics of devotion have been described in many different ways. All these characteristics of devotion are described in many different ways. So all religions are because of this Mata Bheda. The belief different differences in belief or thought so Narada is telling this long, long time ago. Okay. Nana Mayata Bheda Talakshanani Vachat. These characteristics of devotion have been described in many different ways by many different people due to different set of thoughts or beliefs. Okay. So let's look at uh, except of Swami's discourse. When rain pours down from the sky, pure water falls on earth, mountains, rivers and the sea. But the pure water acquires the color and taste of the region or spot where it falls. Likewise, prophets and messiahs coming down in different forms of the world at different times 
imparted their message in terms appropriate to the time, the place and the conditions of the people concerned. Religions cannot be considered different from each other for this reason. All religions have taught only what is good for humanity. Religion should be practiced with this awareness. If the minds are pure, how can religion be bad? It is a mark of ignorance to consider one religion as superior and another as inferior and develop religious differences on this basis. <coughs> the teachings of all religions are sacred. The basic doctrines are founded on truth. Atma Tattva, the truth of the spirit, is the essence of religions. The message of all the scriptures and the basis of all metaphysics. The primary duty of human beings is to recognize that the paths indicated by different religions may vary. But the goal is one. Love, sacrifice, compassion, morality, integrity and similar qualities are common to all religions. In different ways, all religions sought to promote unity in diversity. Bharati philosophy, culture and sacred way of life permeate and shine like an undercurrent in all religions. Bharati culture has affirmed the profound Vedic truth, Eko Vasi Sarva Bhutantar Atma. It is the one spirit that dwells in all beings. This unity of the spirit is proclaimed in various contexts in the teachings of Buddhism, Christianity and Islam. Although in terms of physical form, human beings appear different, in terms of the spirit, they are all one. This is the truth propagated by Christianity. It has declared that all are the children of one Lord and believing in the fatherhood of God, all should live in harmony. This basic truth of the spiritual oneness of all creation is emphasized at every stage in Bharatiya culture. Ekam Sat Vipra Pahudha Vadanti The reality is one. The wise call it by different names. The ultimate reality is one only. Your mental reactions give rise to multiplicity. What you have to offer the Lord is Ekatma Bhava the sense of spiritual oneness. Bharatiyas are wont to fold the two palms together and offer namaskar, salutation. What is the inner significance of this form of greeting? It's an expression of the unity of the many in the one. In Islam, the expression salam is used as a form of greeting. Sa in this term signifies the combined expression of Salokya, Sarupya, Samipya and Sayuchya. Seeing the Divine, having the vision of the form of the Divine, nearing the Divine and merging in the Divine. When these four expressions are combined and merged into one, La, signifying merger, you have Sala. The merging of the many in the one. In Christianity, the term Esu, Jesus, is used to describe Christ. This term also signifies the oneness of divinity. The inner significance of the term Esu is the recognition of the one divine in all beings. In Jainism also the same truth was taught by Mahavira. When the senses are allowed to have their way, all kinds of reactions occur. It's only when the senses are brought under unified control that the nature of divinity can be comprehended. The eyes have the power of sight, the ears can hear, the powers of, powers of all these organs, seeing, hearing, speaking, etc. are derived from the divine. It is the divine that enables the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the mind to think and to have various experiences. It is when all these sensory processes are brought under unified control 
by the conquest of the senses that man becomes a conqueror, a jina, as termed by the Jains. Because he had conquered the senses, the title of victor was conferred on Mahavira. Even as ornaments are varied, but gold is one, religions are varied, but their basic spiritual truth is the same. Buddhism also enunciates the same oneness, declares that in every human being what should emanate is love. For every being, love is the life breath. When such love animates a person, he will not resort to violence. He will practice ahimsa, non-violence. Buddha urged that if human life is to be redeemed, men should cultivate love. Thus, if we try to understand the basic truth of every religion, it will be seen that it teaches only unity. Religious differences poison the mind. No one should give room for religious differences. All are spiritually one. In this context, it should be realized that from time to time, prophets, messiahs and avatars manifest themselves on earth to proclaim the glow of the human estate and make humanness blossom among mankind. So this is a Christmas discourse in 1991. Uh, so I will stop here. This is all I had for today. Uh, Swami is uh, Swami is nicely explained. So as you can see, Swami's discourse are all nothing but expositions of Vedic truths uh, contained in many of the scriptural texts. So in this case, Talakshanani Vachanti Nana Mata Bhedat. So that was the last. Um, one which we looked at today. So we have thus far looked at 15 um, sutras. I will stop here. If there are any questions um, and if I have an answer, I will share. Sairam. Sairam, Sister Aruna, please go ahead. Sairam, brother, in the first excerpt of Swami, um, Swami is saying about the, the perceptor, the father, mother, all are in their respective abodes, right? But uh, whereas Shankaracharya's disciple is serving uh, the Guru as God. So that is something, how that is, here it's said as an abode, they cannot, uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, perceptor cannot be considered as a God, kind of. But in the Shankaracharya story, the disciple is considering Shankaracharya as a god. And two different things. I'm trying to understand that difference. Okay. Thank you, See, there's a subtle difference. By the way, I understand, sister, is um, whoever you serve, don't forget that you're serving the Lord. Okay. Don't restrict the devotion to only that form at that place. That's all Shankara is saying. So even though Padmapada was serving Shankaracharya, his guru, Shankaracharya has impressed upon him that he should always remember that he is serving the Lord within Shankaracharya. Not Shankaracharya, the form of the guru. So that's why Swami says, even when we do seva, we should always remember that we are serving Swami in them, not that person. Otherwise, it will become social service, just like anyone else in this world doing. It doesn't become seva, which is sadhana. So important, it's an opportunity for us to remember that God in that person also. So that is why any seva, after that, we should forget. You know, people say we served 100 people today. If you see people serve. You didn't serve 100 people. You only served one person, the Lord. So that should never be forgotten, which is what Swami is telling. So even if you say your mother is father or mother is... So see the divinity in them. 
They may have their flaws. They may have their defects. But when you serve them, think that you're serving the Lord. Then that way we will avoid any negative emotions which may come because when we limit our work to the person. So we should not, we should see beyond that person and see the divinity and serve that. Or when we serve that person, whoever it is, we think we are serving the Lord. With that we should serve. So that's what Shankaracharya asked uh, his disciple to cultivate. Swami has made the statement, Shankaracharya told his disciple, that is the way you should serve. Only then you will get all the knowledge. See, the test is, <clears throat> how will you know that you are good? You are really serving the Lord. Swami has given the answer that also there. How will you know? See, it's many times you will say, oh, now we are thinking of Swami and serving that person. But there is, a sol there is something which gives away, will know the person, whether the person is good or not, whether you are practicing that. After receiving the teaching from Sankaracharya, Padma Baba could repeat the entire Vedic text at one stroke. That means our own ability to study Vedam, chant Vedam, everything will go up in one stroke without uh, any effort. So it also means if one is able to spiritually, if one is doing that kind of seva of the Lord, Anything which you read, anything, you will be able to recite the Vedas without any problem. No human effort is needed. So only then it is proof that we have served the Lord in other people. So that is so many others would have served Shankaracharya. But Padmapada served Shankaracharya thinking that he is serving the divine, the divinity. That is why he was able to, on the spot he was able to acquire all the knowledge. So which is what Swami has said. I hope that answers your question. Yes, that's great. Just we saying, oh, I'm serving Swami and serving does not help. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. The proof of the pudding is in the charting. And after serving also, no trace will be within you too, right? Yes. Because you have served the Lord. No, because the next minute you're serving the Lord elsewhere. Yes. Six minutes you are serving the Lord elsewhere. So it won't come as the selfishness of thumbs. Yes. Great. Thanks a lot. Sai Ram, sister. Yes, sister Maha. Uh, Sai Ram, brother. Uh, Swami explaining uh, between the Bhakta and the Dasa. So in order to reach God, we had to have both, isn't it? Not just Bhakti or not serving. We had to have both, isn't it? This, uh, so Swami, so somebody is asking the question because sometimes we say we are Dasa, we are uh, Bhakta, how is the difference? The Dasa is always serving the Lord. Uh, but Swami actually in that, uh, you know, people I can think, Swami is saying Bhakta is one who thinks of the Lord all the time. And so that the mental level is a Bhakta. At the physical level, he is a Dasa. He uses the body for that, mind for that. So, uh, so there are all kinds of slaves in this world. You can be a servant for anyone. Swami says, if some minister comes, everyone jumps up and tries to help them. If some rich person, powerful person comes, people become that person's dasa also. So there can be all kinds of dasa, but a dasa who is a devotee is different. That means that dasa is only serving the Lord, is only thinking about the Lord and doing the same. So, so that may, we need both. We need so when he crossing the river, that time he is thinking God. But before that, he was just doing only seva. No, a, a bhakta, when he is doing seva, yeah. the work with the body, he is a devotee who is at that point in time is a dasa. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> anyone can be dasa for anyone. Oh sure. Thank a bhakta you. Bhakta will always be a dasa. Okay. Because great. Thank you. A bhakta will always be a dasa to of the Lord. This man. Thank Sorry. you very much, brother. Sorry. Like we can be devotees of anything in this world also. But uh, devote God. Sorry. 
Brother, that is one thing is a good one, the how you have described that bodily when you are doing is a serva, mentally connecting is a bhakta, right? Swami has explained. Thank you, Sarva. So with these words, I think we'll close the session today. I think there are no other questions. And we'll meet next week. Sai Ram, everyone. Samastaloka Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastaloka Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastaloka Sukhino Bhavantu. Om Shanti 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 Sairam Indu